This is no time, no time. Ta ta ta, ta ta ta, ta 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 ta. For apathy, oh, complacency. Ta da ta ta da ta This is a time for for vigorous and positive action action vigorous positive action the fact, the fact is that tomorrow is today. Tomorrow is today. Vigorous action. In this unfolding come Drum of light and history. There is such a thing as being too late, too late, too late. We are confronted, confronted with the fierce urgency of now, of now, of now. The Agency of now. So quiet now in early slanting sun. The day so young, we might not have happened yet. The garden clear of us, history unbegun. We might be conceived afresh, new chance for life. Not guilty, used, in hindsight none the wiser, in foresight only blinder for all our news. Turning, I catch a gleam, the lightest thread thrown to the winds, slack yet holding fast, a shine conductor wiring a poppy to the post. Then everywhere, that spidery filigree rigging, so many ligaments of hair, hair's breadth, short lengths to take the open measure of what's not there. From flower to fence, from walnut tree to wall, these web filaments uphold a world in fall, erect a scaffolding in autumn air. Just a trick of the eye, perhaps, a shot of magic. But look, and you track a fibre optic line of light, sideways, to catch the sun in passing. Then nothing, or something again, a fluke travelling even as you turn, till lost to view, a sensor sensing your presence, a likely glancing answer. Lines, like others, so fragile, bound, once learned by the book, by ear, fibres of a remembered sound, lines, like tiny consistencies crossing the gap between this and that, lines that carry, connect and seem like nothing, 
a wish perhaps, and yet a tether, a hold on things, a kind of sense. They cannot stay a poppy or staunch a hurt, parry a gunshot, stop a threat or tank or cure or expiate. They only hang like strung telegraphs of light, slides of shimmer, reminders of life again at break of day. New chance, a start, given, fragile and unmeant. In 2015, 195 countries and the European Union signed onto a single sweeping agreement to fight the climate crisis by keeping global warming to well below two degrees or lower, the Paris Climate Agreement. In short, leaders from around the world agreed that we must do everything we can to slow global warming as much as we can to limit the damages of human-caused climate change. President Obama hailed the agreement at the White House. The problem's not solved 
because of this accord. But make no mistake, the Paris Agreement establishes the enduring framework the world needs to solve the climate crisis. It is an ancient mariner, and he stoppeth one of three by thy long grey beard and glittering eye. Now wherefore stoppest thou me? The wedding guest sat on a stone, he cannot choose but hear, and thus spake on that ancient man, the bright-eyed mariner. The ship was cheered, the harbour cleared, merrily did we drop, below the kirk, below the hill, below the lighthouse top. And then the storm blast came, and he was tyrannous and strong. He struck with overtaking wings and chased south along. And now there came both mist and snow, and it grew wondrous cold. And ice, mast high, came floating by, as green as emerald. At length did come an albatross. Through the fog it came, as if it had been a Christian soul. We hailed it in God's name. God save thee, ancient mariner, from the fiends that plagued thee thus. Why looks thou so? With my crossbow I shot the albatross. And I had done an elish thing, and it would work and woe, for all of bird I had killed the bird that made the breeze to blow.
Every morning, since the time changed, I have woken to the dawn chorus. And even before it sounded, I dreamed of it. Loud, unbelievably loud. Shameless, raucous. And once, I rose and twitched the curtains apart, expecting the birds to be pressing in fright against the pane like passengers. But the garden was empty, and it was night. Not a slither of light at the horizon. Still the birds were bawling through the mists, terrible, invisible. A million small evangelists. How they sing. As if each had pecked up a smouldering coal, their throats singed and swollen with song. In dissonance, as befits the dark world where only travellers and the sleepless belong. In 2018, Sir David Attenborough told us that we dump 8 million tonnes of plastic into the sea every year, which is killing and harming our marine life. The mother pilot whale, grieving over her dead calf, watched by millions in Blue Planet, sparks major public debate. 
In the same year, more than 50 nations, including India, pledged to take action to reduce plastic pollution. On this historic occasion today, we make a solemn pledge that by 2022, we shall eliminate all single-use plastics from our beautiful country. Day after day, day after day, we stuck nor breath nor motion, as idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean. Water, water everywhere, and all the boards did shrink. Water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. The very deep did rot, O Christ, that ever this should be. Yea, slimy things did crawl with legs upon the slimy sea. Ah, well a day, what evil looks had I from old and young. Instead of the cross, the albatross about my neck was hung.
You know the wild bushes at the back of the flat? The ones that scrape the kitchen window, the ones that struggle for soil or water and fail where the train tracks scar the ground. And you know how if you leave the bush and walk the stunted land, you come to crossroads paved just weeks ago, hot tar over the mangled roots of trees and a squad of traffic lights, red-eyed now, stiff against the soot-stained fallen leaves. And farther on, you know the dilapidated allotments with the broken sheds, and if you go beyond that, you hit the first block of St Thomas Street Estate. Well, if you enter and ascend, and you might need a running jump over dank puddles in the shaking lift that goes no further than the fourth floor, you will eventually come to a rough rise of stairs that climb without railings to the run-down roof as high as you can go, and a good place to stop. The best time is late evening, when the moon fights through drifts of fumes as you are walking, and when you find an upturned bin to sit on, you will be able to see the smog pour across the city and blur the shapes and tones of things, and you will be attacked by the symphony of tyres, airplanes, sirens, screams, engines, and if this is your day, you might even catch a car chase or hear a horde of biker boys thunder across a bridge. But it's tough to speak these things, how tufts of smog enter the body and begins to wind us down, how the city chokes us painfully against its chest made of secrets and fire, how we, built of weaker things, regard our sculpted landscape, water flowing through pipes, the clicks of satellites passing over clouds and roofs where we stand in the shudder of progress, giving ourselves to the vast outsides. Still, text me before you set out. Call when you reach my door and I will walk you as far as the tracks with water for you travels and a hug. I will watch after you and not turn back to the flat till you merge with throngs of buses and cyclists heading down toward the block, scuffing the ground with your feet. Today, 55% of the world lives in cities, and a quarter of all humans live in the 2,500 most populous cities. That percentage is expected to increase dramatically in the coming decades. 
By 2050, as the global population swells and urbanizes, about 70% of people will live in metropolises. In 2019, over 1,200 local governments around the world signed the Climate Emergency Declaration. Many of the world's most influential mayors announced their support for a global Green New Deal. These mayors are members of C40, a network of 94 large cities committed to meeting the goals of the Paris Agreement. It is time for us to collectively enact a global Green New Deal and to make this global Green New Deal the work of the next decade. The 2020s will be the decade of climate action that ties together economic and ecological restoration. And there's no group of people I'd rather be doing this work with than all of you. You can make it real. With throats unslaked, with black lips baked, we could not laugh nor wail. I bit my arm, I sucked the blood, and cried, a sail, a sail. Alas, thought I, and my heart beat loud, how fast she nears and nears. Are those her sails that glance in the sun like restless gossamers? Are those her ribs through which the sun did peer as through a grate? And is that woman all her crew? Is that a death? And are there two? Is death that woman's mate? The naked hulk alongside Cain, and the twain were casting dice. The game is done, I've won, I've won, quoth she, and whistles thrice. Four times fifty living men, and I heard nor sigh nor groan. With heavy thump, a lifeless lump, they dropped down one by one. The many men so beautiful, and they all dead did lie, and a thousand thousand slimy things lived on, and so did I. I looked to heaven and tried to pray, but or ever a prayer had gust, a wicked whisper came and made my heart so dry as dust. The moving moon went up the sky, and nowhere did abide. Softly she was going up, and a star or two beside. Beyond the shadow of the ship, I watched the water snakes. They moved in tracks of shining white, and when they reared, the elfish light fell off in hoary flakes. Within the shadow of the ship, I watched their rich attire. Blue, glossy green, and velvet black. They coiled and swam, and every track was a flash of golden fire. O oh, happy living things, no tongue their beauty might declare. A spring of love gushed from my heart, and I blessed them unaware. Sure, my kind saint took pity on me, and I blessed them unaware.
And then came the ten moons, full in the sun's glare, and the seraphim. And it was light all night in the orchards, and on the plains, and even in the towns. And mankind rejoiced, because it was now the case that the wrecking and equivocating could carry on the pale night long. Mankind rejoiced and went forth to those places. Twelve hours of light had not made it worth the while to despoil, and gambled collectively on the clifftops, and regarded the night broiling of the sea, hitherto forbidden, but now opened in festival. Half the world's time unpeeled and exposed so fruit might ripen faster and trees flourish higher and forced photosynthesis green all the land. Then night ramblers, night sun worshippers, night motorists fanned out and made the most of spectral light, which bleached out stars and even the cosy old moon herself who had once held a sickle broadside to the sun and now was a hollow daytime shadow. Only a few old believers slept hand in hand, shoulder to breast, as if their lives depended on it, knowing yet that the morning would bring nothing because the day knew no beginning and had no end.
In 2019, six million people take to the streets, uniting across time zones, cultures and generations to demand urgent action on the escalating ecological emergency. Yeah, I think this is the most important issue that we need to be talking about. This isn't a fringe movement, this isn't a greeny issue, this isn't a lefty issue, this is a human issue. We are not drowning! We are not drowning! We are not drowning! We are not drowning! Wake up now! I want to be clean! I want to be clean! Wake up, wake up, wake up now! We are not swinging! We are fighting! Justice! Justice! Climate change is real and it's coming for us and it doesn't matter who you are, whether you are rich or poor, this thing is real. There is more political leadership on the streets of London today than I have ever seen in the Palace of Westminster. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you are not making a difference. You are making history. adults to step up and back us um, up with our strikes because we need everyone to tell world leaders that they need to take climate action now. History shows that when young people act and come together, our voices are loud and our actions are powerful. We know that when we strike, we win. So today we strike because today we win. Today we win. That same year, environmental campaigner Greta Thunberg delivers a powerful message to the world leaders at the United Nations Climate Action Summit. You are failing us, but the young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. We will not let you get away with this. Right here, right now, is where we draw the line. The world is waking up, and change is coming, whether you like it or not. Thank you. The self-same moment I could pray, and from my neck so free, the albatross fell off and sank like lead into the sea. O oh, sleep, it is a gentle thing, beloved from pole to pole. To Mary Queen the praise be given, she sent the gentle sleep from heaven that slid into my soul. Beneath the lightning and the moon, the dead men gave a groan. Their lifeless limbs gan work the ropes. We were a ghastly crew. I heard, and in my soul discerned, two voices in the air. Quoth one, the man hath penance done, and penance more will do. Swiftly, swiftly flew the ship, yet she sailed softly too. Sweetly, sweetly blew the breeze. On me alone it blew. Oh! 
From the earliest cave paintings to the artefacts of our modern lives, the evidence of our dependency on nature and our interdependency on one another has always surrounded us. And yet in our modern age, the disconnect has never been greater. It is as though the roar of our getting and spending has deafened us to the messages from nature that we are destroying the natural and human capital upon which our very existence depends. The ferocity of COVID-19 and its unpredictable path and impact has momentarily imposed upon us a pause in proceedings. It is vital that we use this time to reflect and reset. At a fundamental level, 
none of the issues that the pandemic has highlighted are new. They are at the core of the sustainability debate that has been running for decades. What the pandemic has brought us all is a new sense of urgency and perspective and the affirmation that the time has come for a new contract to be negotiated between business and society. One that is built not just upon the resilience of our businesses and financial systems, but on the societies and nature upon whom we unequivocally depend. We may not have been listening to the signals from nature, but they have been strong and are becoming increasingly so. We must now amplify them and take action before we reach the point where it is too late. Imagine we could begin all over again. Begin afresh, like this February dawn light, coaxing from the Scots pines their ochre burnt earth glow. All over again. South facing mountainsides, balcony above balcony of pines. Imagine we could mend whatever we heard fracture, splintering of wood, a bird's cry over still water, a sound only reaching us now.
O oh, dream of joy, is this indeed? The lighthouse top I see, is this the hill? Is this the kirk? Is this mine own country? Each course lay flat, lifeless and flat. And by the holy rood, a man all light, a serif man, on every course there stood. But soon I heard the dash of oars, I heard the pilot's cheer. My head was turned perforce away, and I saw a boat appear. And now, all in my own country, I stood on the firm land. The hermit stepped forth from the boat, and scarcely could he stand. O oh, shrieve me, shrieve me, holy man! The hermit crossed his brow. Say quick, quoth me, I bid thee say, what manner of man art thou? Since then I pass from land to land, till the agony returns, till my ghastly tale is told, this heart within me burns. Farewell, farewell, but this I tell to thee, thou wedding guest, he liveth well who loveth well, both man and bird and beast, and now the mariner is gone the wedding guest forlorn. A sadder and a wiser man, he rose the morrow morn.
The future we want is in our reach. This year is the year when over 1,000 companies, 500 cities, and 45 of the biggest investors set science-based targets. It's the year when the US re-enters into the Paris Climate Agreement, and China commits to net zero by 2060. It's when the UK announces its aim to cut its emissions by 68% by 2030. This is the year. This is the time to make peace with nature. We are facing a devastating pandemic, new heights of global heating, new lows of ecological degradation, and new setbacks in our work towards global goals for more equitable, inclusive, and sustainable development. To put it simply, the state of the planet is broken. Making peace with nature is the defining task of the 21st century. It must be the top, top priority for everyone, everywhere. In this context, the recovery from the pandemic is an opportunity. The central objective of the United Nations for 2021 is to build a truly global coalition for carbon neutrality. Funding should flow to the green economy, to resilience and adaptation, and to just transition programs. And we need to align all public and private financial flows behind the Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals. We have both a moral imperative and a clear economic case for supporting developing countries to adapt and build resilience to current and future climate impacts. we must use 2021 to address our planetary emergency. Solidarity is humanity. Solidarity is survival. That is the lesson of 2020, with the world in disunity and disarray, trying to contain the pandemic. Let's learn the lesson and change course for the pivotal period ahead. Thank you. 